Welcome to Artists Ideas Now. My name is Laura Marie Brown and I'm creative producer at Liverpool Arab Arts Festival. This series brings together artists, creatives and activists to address the most complex conversations of the moment. Under the theme of Nuktat Wasal, or a point of connection, we're talking to artists about translating the Arab experience and how it influences their work. Iman Aoun is the artistic director of Ashtar Theatre Company in Ramallah. She talks about their 30-year journey and the unique experience of actor training, creative techniques and fundraising in Palestine. I am Iman Aoun, the artistic director of Ashtar Theatre, a co-founder of the theatre in 91. Myself, I'm an actress, director, um, and I do a little bit of everything in terms of uh, theatre maker. And Ashtar, you're based in Ramallah, is that right? Uh, the theatre started in Jerusalem, but uh, our main stage is in Ramallah, but we also work in the West Bank, Gaza and Jerusalem. If anyone um, looks at your website, it's uh, ashtar-theatre.org for anyone who wants to go and have a look. One of the things that strikes me whenever I look at it is you have so much going on. Um, Do you want to tell people a little bit about what the Ashtar Theatre is, what you do, all the different programmes and audiences that you engage with? The initial program when we started back in 91, it was the uh, uh, first theatre school that we established and uh, we wanted to introduce education um, like uh, non-curricular but the following a certain curriculum uh, to the uh, students um, of the age 14 to 18 at that time because it was the uh, the time of um, uh, getting out of the first intifada looking into uh, the possibility of an a, a new emerging country um, there was a talk of uh, um, a peace talk going in in the air um, and all of that so uh, we wanted really to establish uh, a steady um, education uh, of art for the young people to give them a platform to speak up to be engaged, to think uh, critically and uh, to think artistically. And uh, this is how the first uh, initial program started. But then we grew up along along that uh, into um, uh, also going back into the schools and training the teachers how to introduce drama into the schools. Uh, and uh, we started to um, graduate uh, the students who followed a three-year program and they wanted to become trainers. And so um, slowly but surely, uh, the uh, organization got bigger and bigger. At Ashtar, we are a group of um, professional actors, trainers, directors uh, who, uh, who work with the youth but who also work as an ensemble. So we produce um, plays, where newly written plays, but also we co-produce internationally. So we invite or we are invited by internationals to, uh, to produce and co-produce. Um, and we do our plays and to them internationally in, uh, in um, different festivals around the world. Uh, the third program is uh, the social uh, theatre, uh, and we use in that uh, the theatre of the oppressed techniques. Um, we, Ashtar was the first uh, theatre in the Arab world to use that technique back in 97. Uh, we introduced the methodology and we started to translate the books of Boal and we brought uh, the assistant of Boal Barbara Santos from Brazil and trained a group of uh, uh, of professionals here, and we became um, multipliers uh, and jokers that uh, uh, that started to train um, different. Uh, groups from uh, different countries and uh, also uh, from Palestine. Um, and so uh, Ashtar at the moment uh, is still using this uh, um, this technique and this form of theater. We do forum theater, we do legislative theater, uh, we do image theater. 
and um, we use it in order to really make a difference inside our society because theater of the oppressed can really help the society um, uh, go into a debate, um, uh, can help them raise their voice to, uh, towards uh, the uh, decision makers and try to convince them uh, to make um, changes and demand uh, the rights from uh, from decision makers. So uh, that's in a nutshell, but also a fourth program that was uh, newly um, introduced also in, into Ashtar um, after the COVID uh, is the filmmaking. So we started to do short films that are also raising issues and, um, and subjects uh, of debate in the society. We uh, follow uh, research, like thorough researches on uh, topics that are of concern to the society, and we try to do uh, films about them and bring them back to the society to to discuss them and to try to to try and find solutions for the problems raised. So this is what Ashtar is doing. No <laughs> wonder you're so busy all the time. <laughs> um, the, the first I ever heard about Ashtar Theatre was through the Gaza monologues, which launched in 2020. And you, yes. you redeveloped that for lockdown as well. Why do you think you, you redid them as well in terms of, you brought them out, didn't you, in, in the pandemic as well, the, the Gaza monologues? Mm-hmm. Why do you yes. think it's that importance of people telling their stories in their own words? How do you think that makes a difference, not just in art storytelling, but in terms of empowerment as well? Well, um, it all starts somehow with our voice. <laughs> if we are able to channel our energy uh, through our voice and raise our voice and tell uh, the truth or tell the about the reality and um, and really bring um, bring what what is not heard on um, onto the table of uh, uh, of those who need to hear it, whether they are regular people around the world or uh, decision makers in in uh, um, in offices closed uh, closed offices uh, or international decision makers like uh, people sitting at the UN or um, other other uh, powerful entities. Um, the idea for us was that usually we are looked at uh, as. Um, uh, how do we say we say it in Arabic like um like a quick uh, quick news like yeah like like, like rolling news like it, it it comes and it goes type thing exactly uh, the, there's uh, um a shooting here or there's a bomb bombing here or there's this here and that there but uh, there isn't really um an understanding of uh, what the people need who they are what the reality is, what the hidden agendas are, and what the feelings of the people are. Um, and um, what we try to do in the Gaza monologues is to really put forth um, the faces, the names, the stories, the, the, the voices of the people of, of the place, and especially the place that was uh, in just injustified or, and unjustly bombarded um, I mean civilians uh, keep on um, under siege for uh, 17 years now and they had been facing four major wars on them and they, they do not really have an army to defend themselves with um, and so uh, that's why the Gaza monologues is still alive and it keeps on uh, being alive from time to time because uh, the uh, the problem is not solved, and because we still think that uh, uh, they are the Gaza monologues are accurate, and and because uh, no matter when they happen, they are uh, they are almost the same 
I mean, people are dying all the time in the same way. Um, uh, houses are bombarded and um, and kids are losing uh, their uh, families or their parents or their loved ones uh, continuously. And so, so for us, it is important uh, to keep on uh, reminding the people, the, the international uh, community, that uh, uh, we still exist and we still want um, we still want our main like human rights existence to live safely to have our homeland and to have our uh, security so um and this is not really happening and uh, and, and and that's we we're still like continuing in 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 this march in this uh, a plea, if you want, but through art. The the theme for your festival last year was artivism. Um, you know that. I don't need to tell you that. You know that. You did it. Um, but that that sense of with artivism of how is it ever possible, particularly when you're in a place like Palestine, is it ever possible to separate your activism and your art? Are the two just so indelibly intertwined that you cannot separate them? I think I think you can but it's also a matter of choice but even when you want to as you said you find yourself um like going from from the door getting into the into the window it's like yes they are inseparable but um we try sometimes uh, to to make international repertoire uh, plays or to do uh, work that that is not um, connected to uh, uh, the Palestinian um, to situation or uh, the occupation or the war or anything, but we find ourselves somehow um, pushed into a, like presenting ourselves is by itself presenting our situation the fact that that when we are unable to move from one place to another um, freely is a political statement when uh, when we cannot really um, find money to produce the right way this is a political statement because um, because the only politics uh, is governing uh, our subsidies um, whether the money comes from uh, Europe or the money comes from the US or or even the money that doesn't come from the Palestinian Authority or the money that doesn't that we do not take from uh, the Israelis for for instance so everything that we do is somehow connected uh, to the political situation that we live in um, we try to be um, we try to be somehow um, away, uh, naked from politics, off that, uh, that file. But as I said before, uh, we find ourselves sometimes pushed into it by force. Therefore, for us, art, uh, artivism is who we are. That's, that's our identity. That ties on to one of the, you know, the, the theme of our, this podcast series and the theme of our festival is around that point of connection of how we translate our experiences that we so that we can build community and how we can engage with each other but what this talking to artists in this series it's more of that sense of what do you have to cover up to engage sometimes what how do you think about translating yourself and what sides of yourself do you present that perhaps you wouldn't want to when you're dealing with funders from you know from outside of palestine when you're talking to arts organizations outside of palestine do you feel that you have to do that that you have to translate yourself in different ways to be honest uh i mean 
they wish to hear from us uh, what we are not. But um, but we try to be as uh, um, real or as uh, genuine as possible to who we are. Um, sometimes maybe uh, we, I mean, we use diplomatic um, terms or we use diplomatic uh, ways to uh, to reach out to certain people because uh, the, the main issue is to, uh, and the main aim is, is to be able to reach to the other, whoever the other is. But, um, but we will not, and we usually do not lose our essence. We do not lose... Our um, ourselves and our identity and who we are. We try to stick to our beliefs, and we try to convince uh, the uh, the people that we, whether funders or theater makers or even um, international audience, we try to really convey our beliefs to them. Because if we go and <laughs> and um, dissolve our identity then uh, um, why we do theater, why we do art in this case. We could do it anywhere in the world. We could leave the country and and be away and, uh, and just forget about uh, who we are. You've got the um, you've got the sixth edition of the um, youth theater festival coming up in July, uh, the third to the ninth of July. What have you got planned in that? What can people expect to see? Um, our sixth edition is uh, is under the title of Ultra Art, and Ultra Art for us m- meaning that um, the, the extreme, the utmost of what the art could really give us, um, and it might differ from one person to another, one artist or one group to another, um, but uh, but it's also uh, for for us it is how we can use, utilize the, the art forms, and in this case, theater in, mainly, uh, in order to reach with it the maximum that we could. Um, so we have 16 performances, eight of them coming from, uh, from Europe and uh, uh, Egypt and US. So we have a, like a big variety of, uh, of groups. And we have eight local groups, um, so uh, sixteen performances in uh, uh, in six days, and we have uh, a conference, an international conference about the freedom of speech uh, and the freedom of expression. Sorry, so the freedom of expression uh, and the politics, freedom of expression and the society, freedom of expression and genre of theater freedom of expression and policies and what's there and what should be there and it's not yet. Artists Ideas Now is made by Liverpool Arab Arts Festival and artists on the front line. For more details on each artist, check out the show notes. If you want to find out more about the artists and the series or the festival, go to arabartsfestival.com.